the new era of drones that is being ushered in as we speak. And when I tell you it's scary, that is tremendous understatement, right? So listen to this. Bug-sized drones are the most frightening type of ro killer robot yet, is the title of the article. In the new issue of National Geographic, John Horgan details the rise of drones after 9-11 and their creep into American airspace. One thing that stands out is that the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA as it's called, has challenged researchers to build micro-aerial vehicles that, quote, hide in plain sight by mimicking birds and bugs. So now we have drones that have come about that are attempted to look like biological creatures so we don't guess it. Meanwhile, they could be snapping pictures of us. And, oh yeah, they could do some worse things too, as I'll get to in a second. Consequently, the U.S. Air Force has constructed 4,000 square foot micro aviary for flight testing small drones and Horgan wasn't able to witness the work, much of which was classified, but he was shown an animated video showing bug and bird-like micro drones that can, quote, swarm through alleys, crawl across windowsills, and perch on power lines. The potential for these unobtrusive, pervasive, and lethal micro drones is very impressive as they would be able to work together while providing unprecedented surveillance access in cities and houses in addition to detecting aspects of the environment such as chemical presence. Uh, the potential is also terrifying since uh, the mini drones could be used in direct attack missions to covertly assassinate someone with a chemical or explosive payload. Now look, here's the main argument and why this is so scary and why we should all be talking about it. Now look, you guys know I went over all the numbers with you the other day the Stanford and NYU study that said between 400 and 800 civilians have been killed in Pakistan by drones, including 176 kids. You have uh, the Obama administration doing what's called uh, double taps and signature strikes. Signature strikes is when they say, eh, we're not sure if they're terrorists, but they kind of look like them. Bomb anyway. And double taps is when you hit a target, circle back around, and the good Samaritans who are helping the rubble, uh, look through the rubble to get people out, bomb them too, right? Now the argument they give is we're not purposely trying to kill civilians, but if you're trying to help the person who we think is a terrorist, you're probably a terrorist too, so kill them. In my opinion, that's a weak argument, but you know, whatever, let's leave that aside for now and digress for a second. So when everything's overseas, you've had a lot of Democrats say, oh, whatever, I like Obama, so it's fine, right? Now I disagree completely. First of all, you need a declaration of war to do something like a drone strike because it's an act of war. Imagine Iran does a drone strike here, and then we go, no, 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 it's cool. Uh, don't worry, guys. It wasn't an act of war. It was just a drone strike. No, of course it's an act of war. You're dropping fucking bombs from flying robot killers. That's not war. So Obama should have gotten uh, a declaration of war for all the countries that he planned to use drones in. That's number one. Number two, you obviously can't target U.S. citizens, which the Obama administration has done with Anwar al-Awlaki. They even killed his 16-year-old son. I mean, that's indefensible. The argument they used was, oh, he was with somebody else who we think was a terrorist, maybe. Oh, yeah, super convincing. But here's the thing. All of this stuff, while it's really wonky, you need to know your ins and outs and read the news every day to get all this stuff. I understand that, which is why a lot of people are removed from this. But this kitchen table's the issue, right? So to give you one example, on CNN the other week when Christopher Dorner, uh, when the manhunt for him was going on, you had uh, Aaron Burnett ask, normal what she thought was a serious question, you know, uh, what about using drones for Christopher Dorner? Excuse me? So now we're considering using drones inside the borders of the United States, right? And people say, oh yeah, Kyle, you're just a slippery slope argument. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. I read a list to you guys the other day. I don't know whether it was 20 or 30 names I gave you, but there was more on the list of specific police departments around the country that have filed for permission from the federal government to buy their own drones. Now, for now, they say it's surveillance purposes, but you tell me how many years until they decide, throw a gun on there. You don't think that's coming? And they'll start it with the premise of, oh, no, no, it's cool, just for the border. For Border Patrol, we'll throw a gun on one. And then eventually down the road, it becomes, put, put guns on all of them. We won't use them, but just put guns. And then, you know, you know how this story goes. We all read 1984.